Hey, this is Dave from the Character Animator team, and in this month's episode, we're gonna start with some new free blank templates, a blank PSD file and a simple face PSD file that have all the layers and groups named correctly so you can very easily swap in your own artwork and get started. Then we'll move on to how to create a camera system in Character Animator. How do you switch between wide, medium, and close-up shots, and either do that by keyboard triggers or sending it to an automatic timer, and I'll show you how to do both of those. Then we'll move to the community spotlight where we have three very cool but very different puppets that viewers like you have uh, made and submitted. Um, and we'll show you how they're doing some of the cool things that they're doing there. And we'll end up then with a walkthrough of the entire app. What does each panel do? How do they interact with each other? And then I'll show you how I customize my workspace uh, when I'm rigging a puppet or performing or that sort of thing. So. A lot of useful information, hopefully it's helpful. Uh, let's get started. I've added a couple of starter templates into the OK Samurai Puppet Pack, which is available as a free download in the video description below. Um, but hopefully this helps you get started. If you're making a puppet from scratch, um, it's a lot easier to start with something, some sort of structure, and then you put your artwork inside of it rather than just opening up a blank Photoshop document and then having to name all the groups and layers and all that stuff. So an easier way to start may be uh, opening one of these Photoshop files. So this guy's just a really simple head. Um, no body, he's just got you know the basic parts here and you can twirl each of them down and you know take an individual layer and um, you just use this as kind of a basic working starting point for a working head that blinks, that talks, that has the pupils move around. Um, this should give you a great starting point for that. And then if you really want to start from scratch, I've also included a blank uh, template, a PSD file. And so everything here is grouped and named correctly. You just add your own artwork in and uh, go from there. So hopefully these templates will help you get started a little bit quicker. Do less organization and naming of your groups and layers and more time focused on creating the artwork and making really cool stuff. One thing I've noticed with a lot of character animator videos out there is if they don't export their final product to After Effects or Premiere Pro or something like that for composition, then they tend to stick with one camera shot. And uh, that can start to feel a little monotonous after a while unless it's a really quick thing. So while we don't have inherent camera tools yet in Character Animator, there are ways to change the camera with keyboard triggers and kind of set up these, you know, a little bit of visual diversity for your character. So I'm gonna show you how that's done uh, now. So to start out, you can just create your character and import and rig it as normal. You're not gonna have to do this three separate times or for each camera view. Um, you're gonna take this instance of the puppet and drag it into each view. So start off with just doing your puppet just like normal. Then what I did is kind of create this uh, organizational PSD file called camera. And in camera, I have these three shots, wide, medium, and close up. And so if I, uh, toggle these close up is looks like it's a little bit closer medium looks a little further back and then wide is all the way back and these are the containers that I'm going to add my red monster character into as well as the keyboard triggers that will initiate each view so once you've imported that camera file then you can take your puppet and just drag him into where you want him to go and then you can drag him wherever you want and use these layer properties to change his scale for example and then you'll want to treat this like any other keyboard trigger uh, hide others in group swap. And what I mean by that is you want to have your default group here. Uh, some wide angle is my default group and I haven't added any triggers to that. And then my medium group, uh, I've added a one keyboard trigger to that. I also did the latch because typically I'm going to want this to kind of stick. So I only want to press it once instead of having to keep my finger on the key and hold it down. And then hide others in group, meaning uh, hide the wide and the close-up uh, angles and just show the medium. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for close-up. Do a two key for that, latch, and hide others in group. And what that allows me to do then is I have my default wide shot. When I press one, that's going to go to my medium shot. When I press one again, it will go back to the wide shot. And then when I press two, I've got my close-up. And of course, I can go straight to one if I wanted to um, instead of pressing two again to go back to the wide shot. Now, there's actually a way you could automate all these camera movements. And that's if you went to the camera parent group up here and added a cycle layers behavior. Um, you could actually time it so it will switch between the different camera views at regular inter intervals. So I just did it for every 60 frames here. Um, so it's going to go a little quicker than I probably would want. But check this out. I'm, hands are up. I'm not pressing any keys. 
and it starts at the wide angle and then 60 frames later goes to the medium shot and then 60 frames later is going to go to the wide shot. And so you could set that number for something like you know 250 or 500 or whatever you want to automatically switch between. And you could set those up however you want. You could have 10 different you know, shots. I wanna go wide to medium to wide again to close up to wide. You know, keep, have a sequence basically that works for, you know, that works for you. So I think this adds a lot, you know, particularly if you're doing a live stream, um, this is gonna make things a little bit more visually interesting and uh, kind of switch things up. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. All right, so in this month's Community Spotlight, um, this is a really, really interesting character sent in by uh, Scott. And uh, this has a, shows a really wide range of facial expressions. So Scott was being interviewed for this uh, um, live stream, and he wanted a character that had a wide variety of facial expressions. And so if I, I'll just run through the keyboard triggers because this is really well done. So here's angry, and here's devil. Uh, here's cool, uh, blush, um, confused, uh, angry, bored, oh, I'm so bored, uh, super happy, uh, line, guess the Pinocchio nose there, uh, sad, and tongue out, um, scared, Wink, frown, and love. So this is really awesome. He had these all set with keyboard triggers, and it just adds a lot of expressiveness and personality to the character. I mean, that devil alone, that's fantastic. It has a whole different you know, look to it. The whole face is kind of transformed. So how did he do this exactly? So let's dig into this character in the puppet panel a little bit more. So um, the biggest thing that he's doing is just cycle layers and keyboard triggers. So for example, the eyes changed quite a lot. The pupils changed, the eyes changed, all sorts of different things. So if I open up the eyes, I see that I've got all these different variations, blush, bored, sad, devil, angry. Um, and these are all variations that are keyboard triggered. So I know when I press the A key to do angry, um, it's going to go through this cycle layers uh, behavior and go through these four frames of animation to get that angry look. Um, and same with the devil, uh, it's the exact same thing. It just moves through you know, four frames of animation, uh, which are just four layers that are in this group to create, to replace the current eyes and get that new look. But overall, yeah, this is a extremely cool character. Um, you did a fantastic job, Scott, so thank you so much for sharing with us. Another user named Nick sent in this cool character. Uh, this is a guitar playing guy with some head turns there, and I can drag and strum the guitar and have him you know, sing a little song. Uh, and then the cool part is he has this thing here where as he moves his arm, uh, notice the arm and the hand and the arm are both moving, but uh, the guitar is in between them. Uh, so as he's moving up and down the bridge, uh, there's this thing that's sandwiched in between the two. And we were troubleshooting back and forth over email how to fix this exactly when we were working on it. And I made a really simple example um, to try to figure it out. So we've got our two hands that are draggable here. So here's this one that could be the strumming hand. And then this one, uh, you know, kind of the arm and the hand are moving, but there's this guitar that's in between them. And so, you know, you can imagine doing the bridge like this. So this guy's playing guitar or something like like that apparently. But um, if I go into the actual puppet, here's how that worked. So the left arm is its own thing, but then the guitar rig uh, has three parts to it, the hand, the guitar, and the right arm. And so what I did is the guitar rig, I used the staple tool and stapled where I wanted the shoulder to attach. So where I wanted the arm to attach. And you could see that easier if I hid the guitar for a second. And then inside, I've got the hand and the right arm and the guitar, but the guitar, I made that independent by clicking the crown icon over here and then making sure that was set to weld. And so because that's an independent part and that's welded to the character, that's not gonna move at all, but the other parts will. And so this gave a way to make both the hand and the arm move with something in between. So if your character is holding something or wants to play a guitar, a musical instrument or something like that, this may be a good structure to use. So overall, a really cool character uh, made by Nick and doing some really cool stuff with uh, moving multiple parts with one draggable.
So I really like this puppet uh, sent in by Victoria. This is a uh, little frog guy that has some dangle associated with him. And uh, it's really cool to see how he uh, how moves around. And he's a lot of fun to play with. He actually uh, came from, he's a children's toy, um, this pillow. I think he was available at Ikea or something like that a while back. And uh, she took a picture of him basically and cut up the pieces and uh, added some dangle and stuff to make him look uh, really, really cool. Um, so it's just a way to show, you know, you don't just have to use hand-drawn Photoshop or Illustrator layers. Um, you can take photos of things, put them together, and if you isolate the individual pieces, the eyes and the arms and legs and all that stuff, then you get pretty cool results uh, from it. So in the latest CC beta version, we now allow you to export your characters as .puppet files. And this is a really easy way to share back and forth with other people. Um, but I wanted to dig into it a little deeper because we have gotten a few questions of what are the best ways to use puppet files and um, how to get the original artwork out of it and all of that stuff. So here's my character Cassandra and she's got a bunch of stuff and all the triggers and you know she can change her eyes and add glasses and all that fun stuff. So to export her as a .puppet file, first make sure you are selecting the puppet uh, over here in the project panel. It has to have the little puppet icon next to it. It can't be the scene um, that it's in. It has to be this little puppet. And if you've done that correctly, then when you go to File, Export, you should see Puppet show up as an option. And so now I can export this as whatever I want. Cassandra is a great name, so let's go save. And look what that does. That has created this .puppet file that I can now send to other people through email or Google Drive, Creative Cloud, whatever I want. And again, this includes both the artwork of the character, the original Illustrator or Photoshop file, plus all the rigging and extra stuff that you've done in Character Animator in the puppet panel. So let's say I sent this to a friend, they got this .puppet file. If they just click on it or drag it into their uh, project panel, they would see it show up. Now. To get back to that original Photoshop or Illustrator file, uh, you would select the character and then press Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows. Or another way you could do that is go to uh, Edit, Edit Original. And that is going to open up your original Photoshop or Illustrator file and you can do all the different work inside of it. And where this artwork file lives is wherever you've created your project. So here's my character animator project. If I go to CH Media, Gathered Media, you will see your Photoshop file show up there. And that is exactly what I have open right here. So this is great. This is an easy way to send your files back and forth and still have the rigging data and still have that original artwork file. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys sharing files back and forth with other people on your team. Someone in the forums recently asked, you know, a lot of times we're showing these tutorial videos that are going from point A to B to C for a particular workflow, but it would be great to see kind of a bird's eye view of the whole app, a basic overview of all the panels and what they do and how they interact. So I'm going to attempt to do that in a quick, non-boring way. Uh, so hopefully this works and hopefully this is helpful, particularly for newcomers to the app. So always on the left hand side here, you have your project panel. This is where when you import media, this is where it shows up. The main two components of Character Animator are scenes and puppets. Puppets are your actors uh, and they'll get a little puppet icon here. And if I double click on them, that opens up the puppet panel. And uh, that's where you, the puppet panel is where you do all your rigging, meaning you're adding the rules and behaviors and uh, basically the data points to show how your character is going to animate when you're actual, actually performing it. And you perform a character in a scene. And so when I have a puppet selected, I can click add to new scene down here in the left hand corner and that will create a scene. And this is where the fun part is where I get to move around and act goofy and dance around. But the scene and the puppet panel, they're going to normally show up here as tabs. And so I can very easily move between the last two that I've opened up. All right, so the puppet panel, divided into two parts, your layers over here and your canvas over here. Very similar to what you're used to in Photoshop or Illustrator. As I select layers, a lot of different things may change. You'll see, number one, things getting highlighted in the canvas on the right here, as well as the properties on the right uh, side over here changing as I move around. Now the canvas over here, this is where I can see my character and make changes or add data points to it. Um, so all these tools down here allow me to do just that. And the main ones that you have to worry about are the hand tool, which allows you to pan and move around. 
Uh, the zoom tool, which if I click, makes me zoom in. And if I press option or alt and click, that's going to zoom out. And I'll do as a shortcut, hold space bar and drag to do the uh, pan tool like that. And then these handles, these are just data points that do certain things to our character. So for example, a fixed point means we pin it to the ground and we say, this part should not move. This should stay static. A draggable point means we want to be able to drag it with a mouse or our fingers on a touch enabled device and so on and so forth. So basically layers over here, canvas over here, and your toolbox is down here. Okay, so if I click on over to my scene, now I've got my character and moving around and I can change the parameters of the scene by just selecting the scene in the project panel and then going over here to the right and I can see my frame rate, my current duration of how long my sequence is, as well as the width and height of this particular scene. And the scene goes hand in hand with this timeline down here, the timeline panel. And so as I record things by pressing the red record button here, um, that's going to show up here as takes. And I can have as many takes as I want for any particular character. So if I haven't recorded anything, the timeline's not gonna show anything. And if I do have stuff, I'll see all my tracks and it'll tell me exactly what I've recorded here. Now I can actually have as many puppets in a scene as I want. So here I've taken a grassland Dot .psd file and I just dragged it into my scene down here. And whatever is selected is what I'm going to be animating and performing. So right now, this guy isn't moving around because I have the grassland selected. And that doesn't have any tags, that doesn't have a face or eyes or anything like that, so that's not gonna move as I move my head. But if I select my puppet again, then he's gonna start moving around and talking and moving. Now when you have a puppet selected, what determines what is moving or animating at any given time is what's red over here in the right hand side. So for example, right now I can drag the hands around, but if I don't wanna do that, if I clicked that, if I click the red dot to turn it off, then I won't be able to drag anymore. And that beca that's because it has been disarmed. So you can record individual parts. So I could say, I just wanna record the eye gaze. So I'm gonna turn everything off except for eye gaze and record that. Then I'm gonna move on and just do lip sync. Then I'm gonna just do face. And you can build up a performance like that. And as you twirl these down, you'll see there's all these parameters uh, over how a character moves. Um, so the scale, the tilt, the, you know, how, how strong or how weak your movements translate to the character's movements. Um, so with any character, I'll play around with these and try to get them just right to get the quality of animation that I'm looking for. If you add extra behaviors in the puppet panel, those will show up here under the character as well. And then up here, you've got your camera and your microphone. Um, if these icons are on, that means that they are working. Uh, and you can actually switch between cameras if you have multiple cameras by clicking this little thing up here and say switch to default camera or switch to next camera, and that will switch between your different cameras. If your microphone is not showing up, then you can go to character animator, preferences, and the only preference that we have right now is for audio stuff. So I'm using this external USB microphone, um, but I can switch between different audio inputs that I may have. And then this window right here, this is going to show the tracking dots on your face and uh, you always want to center yourself, get in a comfortable position and click set rest pose to calibrate your character to its zero position. So if I wanted to start my performance over here for some reason, I don't want him to be slanted like that. I click set rest pose and now this is my new zero position. So always do that before you record or perform. So that's a basic overview of the layout. Now for some really dumb, stupid tricks. Uh, first, if you have any panel selected, you can press the tilde key. That's that little squiggly one in the upper left corner of your keyboard. And that's going to enlarge any section, any panel that's in focus um, to uh, show that in full screen. So if you're really focused on one section, you can enlarge that and make it as big as possible to see it in all its full glory. Another nice thing you can do is drag parts around. So for example, one thing I usually do is I drag my project panel here to the left of the canvas because I usually don't need all this space over here. Um, and so this gives me a little bit of extra room for my timeline, which I like. And then another thing I've recently been doing is dragging my scene over in the camera 
um, area when I am rigging a character. So as I move around and try things and rig my character, then I've got a real time little mini preview window here so I can see exactly how it's working. So hopefully this is helpful in understanding how the app works, um, how all the d individual panels work together and help you create um, really cool animated characters and scenes. All right, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions or you're running into issues as you're creating your character, something's not bending right or looking weird, um, feel free to uh, post at the official uh, character animator forums down there and myself or someone else on the team will be happy to help you um, with that. And uh, that's it for today. So thank you very much for watching and have fun and good luck.